This is Celebrity MasterChef Australia. Come on, guys! The finals have arrived. Six celebrity cooks... I'm here to win this thing. ...have survived the heat. Matt! Can they survive the semis? That is a big letdown. ..and make it to the final? Here we go. Now, the best battle it out for the title of Australia's first celebrity MasterChef. Run, Michelle, run! And $50,000 for their favourite charity. I'll do anything to win. Rocker Kurt Pingilly. Oh, shit! Trainer Michelle Bridges. There's no point in me making scrambled eggs. Swimmer Eamon Sullivan. Panic starts to set in. Cricketer Simon Cattage. I'm under the pump here and I'm in trouble. Model Rachel Finch. Never done this before. And singer Alex Lloyd. Ah! Burn myself again! Who will win? I'm Kirk Pengilly from In Excess. I'm a rock star. In the late 80s, early 90s, we were the biggest band in the world. Kirk Pengilly, welcome back to the MasterChef Kitchen, the semi-finals. Yep. You pulled a rabbit out of the hat last time. You cooked that perfect bomb Alaska. Yep. I'm excited. It's the first bomb Alaska that we've had. But it tastes really, really nice. So, Kirk, let's see who your first competitor is. I'm Rachel Finch, Miss Universe Australia. Being Miss Universe Australia is certainly hard work, but being a chef is hard work as well, so I'm looking forward to being put under pressure. Rachel Finch, you are the youngest competitor in this competition. You're back to semi-finals. Are you here to win? Yeah, absolutely here to win. You brought us some amazing little techniques. Mm. How it tastes and how it eats, it's a magnificent version of that dish, so well done. Kirk, Rachel, let's have a look at our third semi-finalist. I'm Simon Kadich, opening batsman for the Australian Test Cricket Team. I've played in three Ashes series and I've played one-day cricket for Australia. I'm extremely competitive on the cricket field and I'm sure that that will translate in the kitchen. Simon, welcome back. You get here thanks to that fantastic salmon dish and interpreting Stephanie Alexander's lemon layer cake. I want to comment on how fantastic your crepes are. They're really, really good, man. Well, let's meet the next ingredient in this celebrity stew. I'm Alex Lloyd. I'm a musician. So I also love to cook. Music and food, I think, are well connected. Melody and notes and flavours all go together beautifully. Alex, welcome back to the semi-finals. Thank you. You cooked a beautiful strawberry dessert last time, and that, I think, was your really your first dessert and a complex one. It was, yeah, it was. You have done what no one else has done. You've recreated Katrina's twirl in the most beautiful manner. Thank you. OK, let's meet our next competitor. I'm Michelle Bridges. I'm a fitness expert and trainer. That's it, people. It's time to suck. And I'm the red team trainer from The Biggest Loser. Michelle Bridges. G'day. <laughs> Bit of attitude there. Mate, I'm ready to go. After winning my heats, I think I had the taste of success. I thought, you know, I can do anything. The jus, magnificent. Out of everybody, what you did is you cut everything up really small. small. You did a brilliant job. Very chefy, very chefy indeed. Thank you. Let's meet our last semi-finalist. I'm Eamon Sullivan. I'm a member of the Australian swimming team. I've won a silver medal and two bronze medals at the Olympic Games, gold medal at the Commonwealth Games, and I've held five world records. You're a cool competitor. We saw that in the kitchen. I think the secret's looking cool, but being frantic inside, 
I wasn't cool. It just looked like it. That is delicious. That is crispy. It's flavoursome. It is a cracker. Well done. Thank you. So, an enormous welcome back to the MasterChef kitchen. Of course, this is the semi-finals of Celebrity MasterChef. So let's hope you've got some guts and you're going to come in here wanting to win. Today almost feels like a race for me. You know, I've got through the heats. I'm in the semi-final, and uh, getting to the final is all, is all that matters for me. So, one of you will fall by the wayside each week until there's just three left in the final. Those three will battle it out. And what for? The trophy, for the kudos, for the title of Australia's first Celebrity MasterChef. I definitely want to win this. Lane Beachley, my partner, has got about 100 trophies, and I've got about 10. So I need to add some more trophies to my little part of the cabinet. To go all the way would be the ultimate achievement. Uncharacteristically, we thought we'd start you off with something easy. And then we thought again. <laughs> Let's give them one of our favourite challenges. Let's give them the mystery box. Hey, it's a mystery box challenge. You don't know what's under there. You have to make up a recipe on the spot. Be afraid. Be very afraid. My nightmare has arrived. <laughs> you need to cook the best mystery box dish ever. It's going to give you several advantages going into round two. Getting those advantages could be the difference between staying here today or going home. The fact that one person will be going home today absolutely puts the pressure on all of us. Let's go. Boom, boom, shake the room. We head back to our benches, put our aprons on, and the tension is starting to build. You may lift the lids on your boxes now. You've got a lamb backstrap. You have chocolate. You have coffee. Potato and orange. The mind boggles. There's so many different choices and mixtures that you could go for. You have beetroot, mint, and spinach. My initial reaction was forget the chocolate and the coffee and just go with the rest that's there. You've got 45 minutes to cook us a beautiful dish. Your time starts now. Kirk, tell us what you're cooking. A warm lamb mint and spinach salad with okay. some roast vegetables and lemon garlic dressing. Yeah, what are you worried about? Um, the timing. Mm, yeah. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with meat, so that was my main fear, was just not to overcook it. Alex, you got trays coming out of everywhere. The clock started and my bench is already a complete mess. Some people call it messy and others call it creative. What's the dish? It's a mint encrusted lamb, beetroot chips, and a potato gratin. Have you done that before? Uh, no. Michelle, what is your dish? My dish is orange crepe souffle. Mm. The dish that I'm going to make today are two dishes that I've made in the past, crepes and souffle. I'm going to combine them together which is really out there. That's risky. We're in the semi-finals. There's no point in me making scrambled eggs. Can you do it? Yep. I'm absolutely pumped. Simon, tell us what the dish is. It's uh, marinated lamb with scordalia, which is Greek mashed potato with garlic and lemon juice. Made scordalia before? Once. With the scordalia, I want to make sure that the garlic doesn't stand out too much. Okay. So hopefully Fabulous. George will wow. enjoy it. Yeah, very interesting to see the end result. Good luck. Thank you. My potatoes are cooked. I put them into the food processor, and then I add some lemon juice, fresh garlic, and some olive oil, hopefully making it into a creamy consistency. Rachel, weighing everything out to precision. Everything has to be perfect. What are you cooking? I am cooking a chocolate fondant. Ooh. There are so many things that could go wrong with a fondant. I'm just praying to God that each process is done properly. Good luck, Rachel. Looking forward to a chocolate fondant. Have I got a whisk? I'm 10 minutes in. I'm trying to do two things at once, and Gary comes up to talk to me, and that's the last thing I need right now. 
Eamon. Yeah. Whiskin cream, melting chocolate, whipped egg whites. What are you making? Cream brulee, chocolate and orange mousse, and then an orange and mint salad. And you said you weren't a dessert guy, not a sweet I'm guy. Not. There you are making a dessert. Even though desserts aren't my forte, I want to show them that I'm up to the challenge. I tell you what, if you can pull this baby off, wow. So I'm whisking my egg whites, I'm stirring the chocolate, and I realise I've made a serious mistake. I've left the sugar out of my cream brulee mix. Now I've got to start again, and it sort of freaks me out. At this stage, I'm not too confident with winning the challenge. Guys, you've got 30 minutes to go. Here we are, George, the semi-finals of Celebrity MasterChef. We've got six people here. We've got a couple of desserts. We've got a couple of savoury dishes. We've got a salad. Some complex dishes. I am shocked. Eamon at the back there, he's got a coffee brulee. He's got a chocolate mousse. He's got a little salad going on. Is that brulee going to set in time or just be a loose, wet mix? <sighs> not... not the best. At this stage, after already making one mistake, panic starts to set in. Gary, Simon Cadditch, he's making a scordaglia, and I'll tell you now, I've eaten some good scordaglia in my time. Alex has got crusted lamb, he's got beetroot chips, he's got a gratin. I reckon he's going to be able to pull off a really beautiful dish. Kirk, he's doing a little salad? Yeah. With lamb? He's really good at putting those flavours yeah. together. Is it going to work? You have ten minutes to go! So, George, there's some egos here. They don't want to lose, they want to win. What about Rachel? She's doing a chocolate fondant, a little salad and a soup to go with it. She's squeezing an orange, got a whole body going into it. Yeah. I don't know if she's got enough time. I put my fondants in the oven and I've got less than 10 minutes plate up. I don't really like the mystery box challenge. <laughs> you have five minutes to go. <laughs> so five minutes to go and I decide to start plating up. I carve through my meat and it's looking a bit raw. Uh-oh, what am I going to do? I put the meat on a tray and stick it in the oven. I slice my lamb and it's not looking how I want it. And I realise I've got to get it back on the grill. Never have I seen a group of people so concentrated in the kitchen, but have you bitten off more than you can chew? The moment of truth comes. I'm really pleased. I've got a really beautiful colour and I'm starting to think, maybe I'm going to do all right in this challenge. Five minutes, and I've got about three processes that I still have to do. Michelle, is she going to be able to do a crepe souffle? To be able to get that crepe perfectly wafer thin and then fill it with that beautiful souffle mix, wow, she's going out on yeah. me. I'm going to get these in the oven right now. Five minutes. The clock is ticking away, and my fondants are still in the oven. Oh, no. They need five minutes to cool down. Come on, guys, you need to run. Run, Michelle, run. I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> You have one minute to go. I've got my crepes in the oven and I've still got to do my sauce. Oh, this is going to be easy. Not. The idea of not getting something on the plate is terrifying. Oh, damn it. I'm looking around. Everybody else is more or less finished. And here I am with fondant still in the oven. Never has Gary and I seen such ambitious dishes cooked from a mystery box challenge. You have 10 seconds to go. You cannot be kidding. I pull my fondants out of the oven, put them on the bench, they're out, they're finished. I know that I've absolutely blown it, but what's done is done. I'm just praying the judges like it. Nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time's up. Well done, guys. Good job. Well done. You've just cooked up a storm in the first round of the semi finals the mystery box challenge. We are now ready to taste your food. First up to the tasting table is Kirk. As I'm walking up, I'm thinking, I just hope they're going to like it. It's pretty. It looks like summer. It's blooming healthy. 
tell you. <laughs> if I eat too much of that, I might lose weight. I've got to be careful. Kirk, I love <laughs> the salad. Wow. Looks a bit like um, lamb crowd surfing at an In Excess <laughs> concert. It's salivation material. Yes, the lamb is a bit undercooked, a little bit chewy, but there's good flavour from it. Um, it's, a, it's a tasty dish. Well done. We are all, us three, notorious salad dodgers. <laughs> and there's a reason for that, because boring salads. What we've done here is fresh, exhilarating, a salad for all seasons. I think it's probably the dish to beat. Wow, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. Standing before the judges with my dish, I want to show them that I'm feeling really confident about it, even though on the inside I'm going... Oh. Happy? Yeah. OK, let's cut this thing open and see what's inside and see if it's cooked. Chocolate sauce, great. What's wrong with the dish? It's not cooked. Pancakes take on this lovely sort of caramelised, biscuity type flavour. And it's that lovely little finish that you want to get when you cook a crepe. And that should be demonstrated on the outside. I didn't expect to feel so gutted, but I do. You've got to be commended because what you've done here is put up a dish that potentially could have been a winner and probably would have been a winner if you cooked it right. This could have been the winning dish. That's heartbreaking. You had the courage to try and do a dish that was tricky and risky. It didn't come off. It's the way to cook. I take my plate up to the judges and I'm thinking, please like my dish, please like my dish. What works about this dish is the central element. The lamb is beautifully cooked. Beautiful, flavoursome lamb. It's got this nice, crusty bit around it that's that's textural, but also got flavour in it. It's delicious. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Alex. Having heard the judges' comments, I've given myself a satisfactory mark. I'm a little bit apprehensive because I'm unsure about George's reaction to the score dahlia, whether it's up to his mum's standards. Would have you preferred my mother here to taste the scordaglia or myself? No, I think you. <laughs> the the scordaglia is quite starchy because you've blended it that much that you've activated the starch. Garlic's raw, okay? Can't pash anyone for two weeks material. But hey, I don't think my mum will give you too much of a backhander. Um, not bad. The lamb is undercooked. You've got this little bit right in the middle that's really slippery and a bit slimy and a little bit chewy. I still feel that I've got a chance of winning. Probably not in this challenge, but hopefully in the next challenge. <laughs> As I walk up to the tasting table, I don't even have a completed dish. I'm a little bit disappointed, but what can I do? I tried my best. OK, Rachel, let's see if this little baby will turn out. The ideal fondant just melts in your mouth. I'm not too sure what to expect. Fingers crossed. Oh, thank God. It looks pretty, doesn't it? Looks beautiful. Is it a great chocolate fondant? No. 
Is it a good chocolate pudding? Yes, it is. So if you change the description and it's Rachel's chocolate pudding with orange sauce, then it's a great effort. It's a good dish. It's gooey in the middle. It's nice and chocolatey. You get this amazing sensation in your mouth of this sort of cakey outside and then this soft centre. It's really smooth, luscious and quite sensual in many ways. Wow, a good tasting dish. Well done, Rachel. It's my turn to take the plate up and uh, walk out to the judges. That stare that they give you, it always freaks you out. excited. I really am excited. The brulee tastes like coffee. It's yummy. The chocolate and orange mousse tastes like chocolate and orange mousse. What you've demonstrated in 45 minutes, not being funny, man, there's not many chefs out there that I know that could put that up that quickly without having to rant, rave, and probably do a nani. That's class. That mousse is so light and has all the flavours you'd expect to find there. The freshness of the mint and the orange is a perfect balance. That is a dead set ripper. Eamon, well done. Thanks, man. We've tasted all your dishes and we've made a decision on who the winner is. There's a bit of tension in the room. You can tell everyone wants it. winner of the Mystery Box Challenge is Eamon. It was a bit of a shock, you know, I, th I thought Kirk's salad, you know, could have taken the win, and it was a big relief. Eamon, a dessert plate that really wouldn't have been out of place in a good Australian restaurant. Well done. Round two is the invention test. You get the same set time limit, and the meal that you cook is set to a theme. Eamon, the first advantage you get is to pick the two core ingredients that everybody else has to cook with. Today, in the invention test, you'll be working in pairs. And here's the kicker. You get to pick those pairs. Oh, what? That is so unfair. <laughs> Eamon is obviously a huge threat. <laughs> Grr, Eamon! <laughs> and remember, out of the worst pair, one person goes home. First of all, you need to pick a partner. Who are you going to team up with? I think I'm going to have to choose Kirk. Ooh. I'm on it. I'm a little worried that Kirk and Eamon get put together because they are two of the strongest competitors in the competition. OK, Eamon, pressure's on. <laughs> Who's your first pick, the first team? I think uh, I'm going to do girls and boys. Oh, yes! Oh. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> girl power! <laughs> Eamon, interesting pick. What, what was the thought behind the girl power and, and the boys? Uh, well, I saw that both the boys only cook savoury and both the girls cook sweet, so I thought together with their powers combined, it might be hard to decide which one's going to cook which and could cause a bit of conflict. Oh, very strategic. I like that. And fighting words from the girls? I'm a good trainee and she's the perfect trainer, so... I think Michelle's an amazing cook. She's very organised, very energetic. Now it's time to find out what you'll be doing. There is one meal that ranks up there as the most stressful thing you can do in your life. So our theme for today's invention test is Christmas. Ah. <laughs> Great. Each team will have to cook a main course and a dessert. I've never cooked a Christmas dinner before or lunch. Um, my mum usually takes control of that. Eamon Kirk, in a minute you're heading to the pantry. From there you'll pick the two core ingredients and also pick 20 other ingredients to support your dishes. Let's go.
Eamon Kirk, welcome to the MasterChef Pantry. Let's have a look at the first pair of core ingredients. Turkey and mixed dry fruits. The second option of core ingredients. Ham and white chocolate. What are you hoping with the last? I'm hoping seafood. Let's see if your hopes come true. Seafood and a mixture of summer fruits. I like that. Yeah. Gentlemen, you have to make your decision. What's it going to be? I think we're going to go classic, classic Australian summer fruits and seafood. Mm. I've decided to choose the seafood and fresh fruit, even though it's a bit safe, and the others, other competitors might feel safe with that as well. I think we've got more options with these two. Kirk Eamon, have a look at all this beautiful, affordable produce that's available from now right up until the big day. But from now, you've got five minutes to pick 20 ingredients. OK. So, I reckon salad, brandy if we have enough. We kind of jointly went for everything, really. How many lemons? You wanted that, didn't you? Great. There's always that thought in the back of your mind that you've forgotten something, but look at all the ingredients, I think we've got it all. I want to throw that in just in case. Yeah. All right, that's it, time's up. Well done, fellas. Woof, that was close. So then the fun part, revealing the ingredients we've chosen to the other two teams. Eamon, time to put them out of the misery. My choices were the seafood and fresh fruit. Yes. When I saw the snapper, I was like, yes. I have cooked snapper so many times before, I know exactly the kind of stuffing I want to do for this fish. You're doing the fish? Yes. I'm we got a chance to discuss what we wanted to cook before we went into the pantry. OK. As soon as we get in there, I snap into gear and I start grabbing the ingredients that I need to make my main dish. You don't need to grab too many, I don't think. Have you got pistachio? OK, your time's up. Oh. Tabasco sauce. Come on, girls. Cheating the system. <laughs> I used up every last second I could get, and I even went for the sneaky grab at the end of the moment. <laughs> Alex Simon, your time starts now. Alex and I enter the pantry with a plan. We know that we've got plenty of time to get the 20 ingredients. Yeah. We've got potatoes. I'm freaking out. I've got to get enough produce to make my dish. <laughs> The beans go all over the floor. It's crazy. Come on, guys, count those ingredients and get out of the pantry. Let's go. Good work, guys. You need to bring us Christmas on a plate. Two dishes, 90 minutes. Good luck. Jingle, jingle, jingle. Your time starts now. <laughs> When the challenge starts, we just went head down, bum up, get into work. Kirk, Eamon. Yep. What are your uh, dishes? My dish is going to be the stacked meringue pavlova with yep. fresh berries and cream. Mine's a filo fish on a avocado, corn, mango sort of salsa stack. We didn't want to make a massive banquet. We just wanted to make a good two-course meal. I'm not too sure how it's going to turn out. Girls, come on, come together. You keep beating. Don't chew up our time now. What are you cooking? I'm making a whole baked snapper with Christmas stuffing. Now, the Christmas stuffing is Christmassy because it's red and green in colour. Yeah. It's got the flavours of Christmas, pistachio nuts, orange rind. I'm going to score the thickest part of the fish and Good fill idea. that with stuffing. Lovely, great idea. What so, are you making? Tell I'm making spice pudding with all those nice spices that we use at Christmas yep. time and pudding with a brandy sauce and using the fruit just glazed over the top of the puddings. Oh, OK, sounds, sounds delicious. I felt so confident with my fish. I'd cooked it before. I knew it looked Christmassy. I knew it was going to taste good. So I was feeling great. The most difficult thing for me is the fact that the puddings take 40 minutes in the oven and it's a lot of prep work as, as well as the presentation at the end. And they also need about 15 minutes to cool down. So I'm a little bit worried that they're not going to make the time. Alex. Simon, what's your two dishes? I'm doing a fish uh, with a, a bird lake sauce. I'm stuffing it with some rosemary and some thyme and some parsley. I'm going to do some crab and a few prawns as a little starter, you know, something Gee, like going Christmas. the whole way with the seafood. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. And what could go wrong with the snapper, Alex? I guess I could overcook it, probably worse, undercook it. 
Um, it's a pretty big fish, so it has to go in pretty soon. I'm going to do a vanilla bean panna cotta with a fresh Ooh. raspberry coolie scattered with fresh fruit around the plate. Wow. And there's going to be just a hint of brandy in the coolie. The thing I'm worried about the panna cotta is making sure that it sets. Well, if the gelatin doesn't set, obviously it could be runny. Are you serving it out of the mould? I will be serving it out of the mould, so that's going to be tricky as well. I've got to get that right. For the meringue mix, I separate my eggs. I whisk my eggs until they're fluffy. I then incorporate some sugar until supposedly they're supposed to be nice and stiff. This time they turned out a bit too runny. So I'd start again. Do the same process. I still wasn't happy with it, so I decided to do another batch. So George and Gary come over to pay us a visit and they offer their opinion. You know, if you add too much to sugar at the beginning, that stops the aeration. If there's fat in there, it stops the aeration. Right. Bowls are dirty because yeah. it's fatty, that stops the aeration. So, a little pinch of salt as well. Alrighty, best of luck. 30 minutes down already, you've got an hour to go. Remember, this is the challenge that sends somebody home. I'm stirring my panna cotta. I look over to see Alex on my left. He's got four different things on the go. And he looks like a madman. George Heyman was in the driving seat. He got to pick the teams, pick the ingredients. Do you think that's paid off at all? He's understood that Kirk is the better cook. Yep. So he's picked him and they've created a menu that's quite appetising. Heyman's on his third attempt on the meringues. Is he going to be able to do this? I thought it was going to be easy, and it's turning out not to be at all. How do you think the girls are going? We've got a little crusted snapper. Beautiful flavours that she's, uh, she's putting together. Pistachios, lemon zest, chopped parsley. It's all flavours of Christmas. And we've got a pudding with some sort of spicy fruit. That appeals to me a lot. Mm. I need to quickly get the fish into the oven because I am running out of time to get this baby cooked. Hey! Gary, the boys in the back, it's like the meticulous and the messy. Mm. Do you know what, though? Their menu sounds nice. I like the idea of that panna cotta with the fruits. It's really summery, very Christmassy. It's nice and rich. But I think Alex's fish might be a big sort of domestic for me. Having used the deep freeze in the pressure test and seeing the results, I'm confident that they'll set in time. Forty-five minutes down, you're halfway through. We can smell Christmas in the room, an Australian summer. There was only 45 minutes to go, and I had just put my moulds in the oven. How long does it take to cook? 40 minutes to cook. They take 15 minutes to cool down. I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to do this. You have 30 minutes to go. And yes, it smells all right in here, but you know what? It reminds me of my Christmas lunches. Mum's panicking, there's smoke in the kitchen, and Dad forgot to get the gas for the barbie. So it's time to take the fish out. It's definitely had enough time. Colours are starting to come out in the fish, and that beautiful red that the snapper gets, and I'm thinking Christmas, it's looking good. fish out and take another look at it. It's running slightly pink and I'm not quite sure what that means. I just had this gut feeling, so I put it back in and I thought to myself, there's a chance here I could overcook this fish. I keep checking up on my meringues. I'm not happy the way it looks because I think the meringue is a little bit too thin. I decided to turn the temperature up as time's starting to run out. You have less than 15 minutes to go. With 15 minutes to go, I'm still slicing up vegetables for the salsa and haven't cooked the fish. Panic. I've got everything prepared, except the only thing I'm waiting on is the puddings in the oven. I decided to just pull them out. If they were undercooked, just have to grin and bear it. If the pudding didn't come out right, we were done for. I cut it straight in half. I looked. And it was good. Yay! <laughs> good girl. Thank well you. done. Five minutes to go to create the most beautiful Christmas lunch ever. I 
I decide it's time to get my panna cotta out of the freezer and I want to plate it up. I put my panna cotta in the hot water and try and release it from the mould. This is the key moment. If they don't come out right, I'm gone. Nothing's happening. It's sticking. I'm starting to panic and I'm worried that it's not set in time. Banging it on the plate, trying to wedge it out. Nothing's happening. The panna cotta's not coming out of the mould and I'm worried that when it does, it could go everywhere. Finally, the panna cotta budges from the mould and it sits on the plate nicely. You have one minute to go, guys. Come on. You're down to the wire now. I'm under the pump here and I'm in trouble. He finally gets his three panna cottas out on the serving plate. Ten seconds to go. Panna cottas are holding. I'd start to drizzle the coolie on top. Everything seems to be going OK, and then all of a sudden, disaster strikes. It goes everywhere. One, that's it. Step away from your stoves. Brilliant job. That is amazing. I check out our three dishes. Oh, you're so incredible. I actually think, you know what? We could win this. You've just completed round two, the invention test. The two teams that have created the best Christmas lunch will go straight through to the next semi-final. And for the bottom team, the person that's created the worst dish will go home. So it's tasting time. The first pair we'd like to see, Simon and Alex. Bring your food up. Walking to the front with the panna cotta puddle is not something I'm proud of. It looks depressing and it's disappointing. OK, let's find out about this fish. Is it cooked? cooked the fish perfectly. It's spot on, it's moist. It all looks good, but does it deliver in terms of taste? Personally, I would have liked more flavour in that fish. It's pure in a sense, it's just snapper. Do I like it? It's a feast. But have you nailed it? Not sure. Steaks. Poo shit in the prawns. Potatoes that should be crunchy, that are soft. Beans that should be quite yielding, that are crunchy. Big problem. Snapper, which is possibly the most abused fish in Australian restaurants. Beautifully cooked. And that's really rare. The panna cotta. In terms of flavour, I'd devour all of that because it's really tasty. It's creamy and it's yum. But unfortunately, it doesn't look too sexy. I, I like all these little components. It's fun. And I think you've achieved the, the whole Christmas theme. It's colourful, exciting to look at. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Thank you for bringing the spirit of Christmas on the table. Hold well on. I know that Simon and I have done our best. Hopefully our flavours and our passion for food will win through. Kirk, Eamon, bring your dishes. After seeing the other two teams have put up, I'm feeling a bit nervous. next concert, Kirk, maybe use it as a prop on your head or something, because <laughs> it's disgusting. 
But that there is exciting. That salad, that prawn salad with the mango in it, is beautiful. It's got this awesome balance of acid, chili, and but I could eat all of that. It's so yummy. That is a beautiful dish. I love pavlova. It's a marvellous thing. I like the fact it's thin. I like the fact it's chewy in the middle. And I love the fact that when you were plating up, you had these beautiful half-cut blueberries, these little spikes of strawberry, the passion fruit over the top, and you carefully dusted it with icing sugar. The question I have is enough Christmas on this table to keep you out of the bottom. Walking back to the bench, very confident in the fact that they all like the dishes. A bit unconfident, it's not Christmassy enough. Next up onto the tasting table, our two girls, Michelle and Rachel. It's our turn to take our dishes to the judges and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling a sense of girl power. <laughs> what about the snapper? Is it cooked? <laughs> the million dollar question. Uh, I believe that it is. Let's taste them. Unfortunately, the top part is not cooked. Right, first up, looks fantastic. Looks brilliant, looks clean, looks thoughtful, looks impressive. That fish comes to the table, it's raw in the middle, and from that section there, which is the meatiest and sweetest, can't eat it. That is a big letdown. When I realised that the fish wasn't cooked, I was absolutely gutted. All I could think of was Rachel, I've let her down, I've put her in a precarious position as well now. Oh. the sound of sleigh bells ringing, well done. These puddings are the sort of thing that I would want to steal to say this is a future of Christmas pudding in Australia. Absolutely delicious, knockout dish. It is better than Eamon's dessert earlier on today. But the question remains, is the quality of those puddings enough to save you from the problem with the snapper, will those puddings stop you being in the bottom pair? I just went from this massive high to this massive low. Bugger. <laughs> okay. Well, we've tasted your Christmas lunches. We've reached our decision. From the pair that's cooked the worst Christmas lunch, the person responsible for the worst dish, We'll leave the competition. Knowing that potentially Rachel and I are going to be in the bottom two, it's terrible. Kirk, Eamon, please step forward. You're through to the next stage. Well done. <laughs> I really thought we were going to be the bottom pair, and we're through to the next. <laughs> We love that pavlova, that was absolutely delicious. Really set the sense of Christmas. Avocado, mango, chili, prawns, beautiful combination. Guys, wonderful job today. So go home, get some rest, and come back refreshed and ready for an even bigger mountain. Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Good luck. So, comes down to the four of you. Michelle, Rachel. Simon, Alex, what a day. Cooked up a storm. Michelle, that snapper looked amazing. And you put your knife into it and it's raw. And that 
is a big mistake. Rachel, yours was the dish of the day. Brilliant, amazing, we would all demolish it. Simon, panna cotta. It was not gonna set. Alex, you left the poop shoot in the prawn. Matt didn't like your spuds and the beans. They're a little bit squeaky. You're in it together. If it was a bad dish, was the other part good enough to carry you through to the next stage? Rachel, you're through. Both of you, Michelle, whew, lucky girl. The fact that Rachel was there and saved my butt. Thank you, Rachel. Off you go. Thank you. Simon, Alex, comes down to the two of you. Only one person can go through to the next round of the competition. Simon, I'm afraid it's not you. It's disappointing to hear the verdict. I'm relieved to know that Alex didn't go out, and if I'd stayed in, I would have felt very guilty. Alex, I've never seen a more relieved man. Alex, Simon, Thank you so much. Cheers, mate. Great to meet you. Yeah, hey. Thanks, guys. See you well done, guys. guys. <laughs> well done. <laughs> See you, guys. See you, guys. I love my cooking. I don't profess to be great at it, but it's something that I'm really passionate about, and I know I've learnt a lot. I've made it through to the next semi-final. I really want to win this competition, but at the same time, I know I've got a lot of work to do. Next time on Celebrity MasterChef. If this was my kitchen, I'd be kicking your... Five fabulous celebrity cooks. Never done this before. Fingers crossed that things are going to be OK. A five-star hotel kitchen. 80 paying customers. This is not an easy place to work. And someone's MasterChef journey. Shit. Take this away. Take them away. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Will end.